Okay, so having looked at some demos, seeing what P5JS is capable of and doing a little practice, let's talk about what your homework is gonna be for this week. Um, if you go to the GitHub page for the class, you'll find up here at the top, um, week by week, that's where you're gonna find the assignment and things like that. You can also find it if you scroll down um, to the course calendar, you can click on those links as well, but I think easiest is gonna be up here. So we're under week one, Drawing basics in a couple of weeks. We'll see why this says week zero zero as the first week. Um, and if you look here, we'll see some folders with the code examples, with images, other weeks that might include readings. And then down here is your assignment. So um, your project this week is to make a drawing of a robot using only drawing commands in P5JS. Um, this TLDR is a good place to start. This shows you just like high level what you're going to do this week but let's talk about the assignment. So um, we are so used to having really amazing and complex tools for making art on the computer. Um, and if we wanted to make a drawing of a robot, maybe we would open Adobe Illustrator and we have all these drawing commands, really complex, cool stuff. But the ideas that underlie how Illustrator and all these programs work is what we've talked about today, a coordinate system, pixels, colors on the screen, and drawing commands, and that's really it. And we'll see that the things that we've covered this week are foundational for the whole rest of this class, and in fact, the all, almost all of computer graphics. Um, it's the ways that we start using them and the additional things that we add that make them really powerful. So I know it doesn't seem that exciting yet, but actually these are, are really foundational ideas. Um, so building on the examples that we've talked about this week, um, I'd like you to make a drawing of a robot using only code. So you can use anything that we've talked about, shape, color, stroke, transparency, and I'd like you to make this as detailed as possible. Um, if your grade is really partially about the technical implementation and also about how this looks, like we're, we're making art here, so this should look really great. Um, your robot can be any style you want, and it does not have to be based on an existing robot, but if you want to do some sort of visual research, I think that's a good place to start. So like a Google image search, and I have some images I'll show you in a moment. Um, and this could be like a, a, a robot from fiction or one that you invent in your head. Maybe you want to make it kind of like an old school retro robot or some kind of flying drone thing or whatever you want is great. Um, the other thing I'll ask is that if you have experience with code, um, normally in the future, I'm going to say, awesome, go crazy. I want you to pull those ideas and your knowledge together and like make really cool stuff. But for this week, I'd really like you to just stick with what we've covered. Um, this is very much about um, getting comfortable with the coordinate system and the P5JS drawing commands. Um, so, uh, you know, for now, please avoid things like for loops, um, interactivity or animation, as hard as that might be. Um, just wait. I promise you're going to be able to do that stuff later. For now, I'd really like you just to stick with what we covered. And a good way to think about this is how can you use simple tools to great effect? And in fact, that, that's so much, that kind of problem solving happens all the time. So let's say you want to make a gradient. Um, you know, Photoshop or Illustrator have tools to do that. But really, if you think about it, you could make a bunch of rectangles that have changing color or changing transparency. And if you stack enough of them or they're small enough, um, you can start to build a pretty convincing gradient. In fact, that's really what happens under the hood when you make one in Photoshop or whatever. Um, so thinking about those kinds of problem solving is, is really key. Um, Code examples. So here, there's a link to all the examples, a collection of those for this section. Uh, so you can click on those and run them in the browser and look at them. Um, I've also included a template for your code for this assignment. Um, feel free to use this if you want. You can go to File, Duplicate, and make your own copy. Um, and this just includes some basic structure. So robot drawing, you can replace this with your name. Feel free to add any other info. Um, we'll talk about the size in a second. And then just adding your robot code here. You don't have to use this template if you don't want, but that's a good, easy way to get started. Uh, the other thing that'll show up here in this uh, section as soon as this video gets uploaded is a link to a YouTube playlist with all of these videos so that you can um, watch these, go back to them, refer to them alongside the code, that kind of thing. So your deliverables, every week this is going to um, be in your assignment, um, and it just tells you what you need to turn in and how. 
So um, you're going to create a sketch that's either 600 by 600 pixels, or if you're ready for the challenge, um, have it resized with the browser window. So please don't make it too tiny. You know, 300 by 300 is too hard to see. Um, you can always resize the editor um, by doing Command or Control plus and minus, and that way you can give yourself a little more room. Um, and then when you're done, you're going to upload a link to your code from the editor to Canvas. And I'm sorry, this is a, a typo here. This will get changed in a second. Uh, it should say 11 a.m. Eastern, not 12 p.m. Um, but uh, yeah, so the way you would do that is you go up here and you can either just copy this link or you can go to uh, File, Share, and then this Edit link down here, and it'll copy that as well. Please don't do the presenter full screen because then I can't see your code. I want to be able to look at your code and see the result. Um, so yeah, you're going to just create your sketch and then upload a link in Canvas and that's how you're going to turn it in. Super easy. Um, if you have any problems with the homework, with turning it in with Canvas or whatever, please don't wait to tell me. I really need to know and I want to help you. So send me an email. Um, if you shoot me an email at like 10 minutes before the due date, uh, due time. I'm not going to be able to help you, so don't wait. Give yourself some time. These things are really challenging, um, and it takes some practice, so give yourself some leeway there. Um, every week, I'll also be including stretch goals. The idea here is if you're just zooming ahead and you want to challenge, you can do that, so a couple of suggestions. One would be um, multiple angles of your robot, maybe separate sketches or maybe like a grid of of different angles could be cool. Again, making it resizable with the width and height variables um, would be great. Um, and if you want to, just like the table and chairs, if you want to try drawing your robot in perspective, that would be awesome too. Very hard, very hard, but really cool. Um, and then some inspiration images. So if we will look in a second in the image folder um, for this week, but there's some examples of folks from a range of media, some using code, some not. Um, that I think are really cool that might give you ideas as you start to think about stuff. Um, before we do that, though, I want to show you what this might have looked like had we offered this course like 40 years ago, 50 years ago. Um, so this is what saving an image used to look like from a drawing. So uh, this big machine here is an oscilloscope. It's a piece of lab equipment. It's kind of like a TV. Um, and this is how a lot of early computer graphics work was output. So, and in fact, this little tiny guy right here, that's the screen. It's really small. Um, and the only way to get an image off of that is to take a photograph of it. So this is a Polaroid camera with a special mount that clamps to the surface. And when you're ready, you run your program and you take a Polaroid and you hope it's exposed right and that it looks good and, and in focus and all that stuff. So be grateful that all we have to do is add a little save command and it does the whole thing for us. This is what it used to look like. Um, and imagine you're making a film with this. You have to take hundreds and thousands of pictures. It's quite the process. Um, so if we go all the way up to the code folder, oh, I'm sorry, not the code folder, images folder, there's some stuff here and then there's some links. So um, Henri Matisse, I think is a great starting point. Um, so this is, early 20th century, kind of the um, as modernism is being born. Actually, this piece is a little later. This is from the 1940s. Uh, but Matisse is a painter, uh, a drawer, and one of the early kind of creators of this idea of collage, so cut paper. Um, and this is from his series Jazz, where he was really influenced by the sound and the culture of jazz um, and trying to kind of like capture that visually. So this is cut paper. Um, and what I really love about this is that he's using simple shapes, simple color, in this really vibrant kind of composition. So he's thinking really creatively. Um, you know, it's not just a grid, it's like um, flowing and moving. Now, obviously doing this with a pair of scissors is really different than with code, um, but I think this is a great point of inspiration. Here's another set. So I think this is actually um, multiple images from the jazz series um, that kind of go together, but you can kind of see all these different ones, these are really great. I love the color, the shape. These are super great. Um, oh, I have a PDF here from this incredible book from 1993 from Asumu Sato. And um, this file is kind of big, but you can download it. It's um, this book called The Art of Computer Designing. And I'm in love with this. So this is a, we should all aspire to this. 
Um, this whole book, not only being like the raddest looking black and white thing ever, uh, if we scroll ahead a little bit, there's a bunch of text. Let's look for some examples. So these are all generated with code. Um, and what I love is how they're using these simple shapes put together to make complex, rich pattern kind of drawings. So it seems frustrating to think, oh, we've got a circles and squares and what can we even do with that? But this book, which is you know, over 100 pages long, I think is just a superb example. I mean, these are just lines. This section is just lines. And look at this awesome goat head. How cool is that? Fox, um, this tiger is super rad. So overlap, um, stroke, weight, color, density, all of that kind of stuff. And this book is like a tour de force of this. Typography, um, all kinds. Of, look at that. It's amazing. It's amazing. There's so much here. Um, and I think later we see some more kind of heavy line weight stuff. I don't know. Yeah, like this. So this is just combining black shapes on a white background. This thing's amazing. So cool. Thinking about decorative elements in the corner, that this is a really a composition and not just like um, this thing stuck on the page, but it's really thinking about this as an overall drawing. That's something I'd like you to think about. This is just super rad. So take some time. Look at this. It's really, really good. Um, a couple other things down here I wanted to show you. There are some, um, I really love using Instagram as a tool for finding new artists, designers, and folks doing cool stuff. And I would encourage you to think of it as a resource. So um, I just wanna show you a couple of illustrators that I really like. This is um, Elton Koons who does these. These are done in like a 3D program, but I think the visual language of these is really great. And you could think about that in processing. Obviously like the shading here would be hard to do, but I love how um, these use these like really simple shapes. It's really great. Um, Matt Carlson, based in Nebraska. Also, you know, these none of these are done in code, um, but they do have this kind of, oops, um, simple shape kind of thing going on. So um, I guess you'll have to log in to see them bigger, but um, they're worth it, I promise. Um, these are really cool. I really love these. You know, thinking, you know, I can already picture how you might start doing this within processing. Um, and, you know, even something as complex as these are really just layers of shapes. Of different colors so um you know with enough patience you could do this with code um, this is aaron anniker based in london also really awesome simple shapes to really great effect thinking about also mundane stuff like things you get at the grocery store um, pictures of friends all you know but the color is great the shapes are great Instagram really wants me to look. <laughs> I probably should have logged in. Um, this is Ori Tour, also um, super cool. I love the use of outline here. So um, this very thin stroke weight that makes it feel like hand-drawn. These are just bananas good. These are so cool. So take a look at these. Um, Ricardo Cavolo, also using line weight and um, color and simple shape to really great effect. A lot of these are murals, so they're huge, but also textiles. And this is one of the things I love about creative programming. There's no reason your work has to stay in the screen. Um, you could output it and print it using inkjet on textiles or use it to create stencils or projections. There's so many places this stuff can go. It doesn't have to stay in the computer. Um, but I love the detail, the patterning, the like just layers of stuff. This is uh, Malika Favre, also um, London and Barcelona. Simple shape, great illustration work, you know, super cool color palettes, really great. Um, Ruby Taylor, um, I think also London based. And again, you know, these are all examples of folks using simple shapes in really cool ways to create these like amazing drawings and illustrations. And then Mike Perry, who's a New York City based artist. If you've ever watched Broad City, he's done all the animations for them. His work is really cool. Um, this is mostly hand drawn, I believe, um, but he does these incredibly intricate, detailed, squirmy looking drawings and paintings. Um, but these are really awesome too. So psychedelic, trippy, super great. Um, so those are just some examples of artists using simple shapes and colors. Um, I do have a link to Wired's 
50 best robots. So if you want some robo inspiration, you can check that out. And um, my favorite saddest robot ever is the ketchup bot. We're gonna watch the ketchup bot. Here he is squirting. All this ketchup bot does is squirt poorly, squirts ketchup all over the place. Saddest, messiest robot ever. I love it. So you can check out Catch a Bot, super good. And then um, these have nothing to do with the assignment in particular, but I wanted to show you a couple of artists who have used robotics in their own work. Um, and this is the a kind of a place where creative programming can go later if you start um, adding electronics and digital fabrication and things like that. So this is Ian Ingram, who's an artist working with robotics um, and bio stuff, really cool kind of intervening technology in the natural world together. Um, Dan Chen also using robotics and thinking about um, like extending human interaction and stuff like that, really cool. And then Su Gwen Chung, who's got this great kind of um, combination of um, robotics and traditional media. So she developed this system called Doug, um, which is a computer and an artificial intelligence um, that she draws with. So if we see here, this is with a huge robot. It's also done with a much smaller one where it can see through a camera what she's doing and they collaborate together and they draw together. And this work is, is really interesting. So um, back up to the top TLDR. This is due in a week by 11 a.m. Um, your sketch should be 600 by 600 or resizable. You're gonna turn it in by um, putting in a link to your code on Canvas um, and then see the demos and the code examples for, for all that stuff. And then email or, or drop into office hours or student hours if you need any help with anything. So um, welcome to the first week. This is really exciting. We're gonna be doing all kinds of cool stuff using this. So I can't wait to see your robot drawings.